So about five hours drive down south from where I am in Sheffield, there's a shop called The Vintage Toy Monster. It's owned by my friend Ian, who is a dude that I've known for absolutely years from the toy fairs, as a guy that brings the dopest stuff whenever he stands. So I always knew that his shop was going to have some nice stuff in there, and I always wanted to make the trip down there at some point. I've also got a friend who lives down that way as well, Bill, from the YouTube channel Bill Making Stuff. He doesn't live too far from Portsmouth, so I figured I would try and kill two birds with one stone, go visit Bill, go visit a toy shop, and squeeze in a bunch of other cool stuff and turn it into a little road trip. So we all set a date that worked for us, and we finally got to make it happen this weekend. Myself and bent legs made the journey from Sheffield all the way down south. It was a very grueling trip, lots of driving, we burnt through lots of petrol, but we honestly got to see some of the coolest toys that I've ever seen with my own eyes, which is saying quite a lot for the amount of toys that I see on a regular basis, but I'm really, really not fronting. Like This was one of the most amazing toy trips that I've ever been on. Not only that though, but everybody that we hooked up with was in such good spirits. Everyone was such a joy to be around. I came back super inspired with some great memories and also some awesome pieces for my collection. So without further ado, this is episode one of our little toy hunting trip that we've just been on, that we just got back from, and yeah, I really can't wait to show you what we got up to. Slimehouse TV, myself, Bjork Kane, back on another road trip with man like Bent Legs, and today we're heading down south on what is probably one of the furthest road trips that we've done so far on the channel, other than going to Tokyo and America and stuff like that. Within England, this is definitely a long mission. So we're going to be doing a few things while we're down here. The first point of call of today in this little few part episode series that we're going to be doing while we're down here is picking up our friend Bill from Bill Making Stuff. So this is another guy that runs an amazing YouTube channel, very known for like doing his crafting and building war game stuff and dioramas and that kind of thing. But he's also a toy collector. So we're going to pick up Bill and then we're heading over to Portsmouth to check out the Vintage Toy Monster. So the Vintage Toy Monster is an awesome shop that's owned by our friend Ian that I've never actually seen in person, but I've seen it on videos and on pictures and stuff and it always looks like it's stacked with some real nice pieces so that's just one of a few things that we're going to be doing while we're down here after we've been to the toy shop we're going to go back to bill's house and film something for a little collaboration for a future video so we'll talk more about that at the time and that's just day one of a little two-parter that we're going to be doing while we're down here at least a two-parter depending on what else we film so yeah man really looking forward to it let's see how we get on After a mammoth drive from Sheffield to London to Worthing to Portsmouth and all these other places, we finally managed to get to the Vintage Toy Monster. So myself, Bill and Bentlegs got our cameras set up, attached our little microphones and headed inside the shop to see what was on offer. So I said hello to Ian, started having a little look round, getting a little layout of the land, and I turn around and I see Bill straight into a box of VHS tapes. It's like a some VHS about that you found. Oh no no. It's about more than worse. What they call it extreme. The extreme that band, isn't it? Mr. Blobby. Bill straight on the VHS. Straight on there. A lot like myself, Bill is a big movie fan. He's very much into his exploitation movies and 80s horror and that kind of thing. So when he sees a box of VHS tapes, he gets just as excited as I do. Well, maybe not as excited because that's a lot to live up to. And he's a lot more like cool and calm and collected than I am. But I uh, I reckon he was pretty buzzing with his tapes. I can always tell. Oh man, look, gotta get that. Oh, it bit... can be only one. So you look for them if you want. Oh, They're yeah. All empty boxes. So is it I just boxes? Them. No yeah, way. That's the best bit. Do you know, like, get Callum and that retro yeah. ghetto, they'd be just going on eBay to buy the boxes. Yeah. They've got the cartridge. So why won't they then buy the cartridge, put the boxes, and then in the next couple of weeks. Have they got inlays or, or yeah, mounts? Check them out. Oh. Callum, what, you know more about Poor this Callum. Stuff than me. I feel to, this I feel to video call him while I'm here. This is a... Now, something that stood out to me straight away, and it's not even something that I'm specifically looking for, but I've got a good friend that loves this stuff, and I'm always looking out for stuff for my friends when I'm on these toy hunts as well. I saw it 
it just on the floor next to the counter when I first walked in, and it was a big box full of empty boxes for Super Nintendo and Game Boy games. Yeah, I'm 60 years old. <laughs> <laughs> 1,000 years old. Yes, with that. <laughs> Can I... That's like the best artwork, man. Oh, no, cool, that Earthworm yeah. Jim art, I love it. Now, like I said, this is not something that I'm specifically in the market for, but if you know me, you know that I've got a very good friend called Callum who runs a YouTube channel called Retro Ghetto, and there's nothing he likes more than a nice crisp Nintendo box. So when I saw a box on the floor full of them, I caught lie and said that I didn't get excited at the thought of maybe being able to bring something cool home for my friend as well. Yes. Bonanza Bros. Mm. Yeah, see, you're nice, yeah. Two facts, two lemmings. I like the artwork on the boxes. These, these older Amiga ones oh, and that, they... Look at that. I used to pick them out of the booth sales. Didn't even play them. I was just looking for the Like, art. just that on your wall? Years ago, I used to pick them out all the time. No one wanted them. Mm. Hey, dog. Right. Quality. So why are they all empty? So this... I'll get a few people to come here. They're house clearance guys. Yeah. Right. And then they're, they'll either send me messages. I'm clearing any good, any good. Draw so I've been at all the time. Oh, no, don't be it. Don't be it. Bring yeah, it here. See, I'm even... So, I'm looking. I've got a few loose games. Like, if I could find the box for yeah, them. Yeah, I won't, I won't sell the box until I put the games in. Oh, see. is that what you'll do, sir? Yeah, so? yeah, right. yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. Oh, you know, look through me. Well, I can look through them. But that's the idea, see. I thought I'd buy them. I paid good money for them. Mm. Most, most people around here are pretty switched on. And that's got manual. Is, it's easy, isn't it? Just check online now, isn't it? It's not hard. No, that's a cool one. Look at that one. Oh, uh, Spider-Man and Captain America. Yeah. Mortal yeah, Kombat. So that's, what that's what console is that then? Is that? But he had an offer from someone else, and I had to sort of up the offer. <laughs> What's in bottom from a full of mask figures? figures? Yeah, but this one's in there. I've got to put them together. Oh, them GI Joes always felt a bit. Yeah. Got manuals and all. Yeah, there's loads of manuals in there. It's fit. Final fight. Hagar. Oh, number three. <laughs> yeah, I like looking through. Separation anxiety, look at yeah, that. All the different uh, Venom suits. Now, unfortunately for me and Callum, Ian had only just got these in from a house clearance guy that he knows. He'd not had a chance to go through them or anything like that. And he planned on buying cartridges to put them to the game so they could put a whole package together. So he wouldn't sell me any. But it seems like in the future, he's going to have some real nice Super Nintendo games for sale, either in his shop or at the NEC when you see him standing there. So definitely keep a lookout on Ian's stock in the future if this is your kind of thing as well. Remember these, Bill? I like, grip on things, but they do my yeah, monster yeah, ones. Yeah. They're dope. Do you know what? Like you don't you don't realise you remember the stuff until you see it and it yeah, just comes straight a back. Yeah, little flashback. Good. Yeah, I remember sticking them all over the flat when I was a kid. Ed two o nine. That's the Necker release. Always loved that. Yeah, yeah. It's like the dopest, uh, the do one of one of the most dopest designs ever. I always mentioned the head's like a giant microphone. Yeah, they even said that like having, having a grill the, the like that. On the floor, doesn't it? Like, uh, it's like the most, it's just like a target to shoot down. It'd never get away on a normal robot like that. They were saying, having that like well, the, microphone the and the grill, it's just like a target to shoot down if you're going to try yeah, to destroy it. Like but it looks so good. Isn't it? Or like a, it's supposed to look like an animal, isn't it? Yeah, and I think they said at first, the, the mouth will flip the other way around. It looks like a smile. So they put it that way and it was like, yeah, yeah, that works. Yeah, I used to watch that right, Robocop right. making of all the time, man. Yeah, I know it is, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that is cool. What'd you build? It's like the robot. That thing, the baddies, uh, oh. they call the dredge. The dredge. The pure energy, man. You can't do anything about pure it. Pure energy. Pure energy. Like me. You won't even have to paint them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait to switch off. No, watch that. It's a good film. I'll, yeah, show, I'll show my son on the way home from holiday on the iPad in the back of the car. He actually liked it. He doesn't like anything. El the Lodda de Tespart. It's gone. Um, <laughs> all logos covered up by uh, another yeah, logo. Right, another logo. Okay. Uh, it's great graphic design. Really? The terror. Um, like scary face. Now, as I said, myself and Bill have a lot of similar interests when it comes to films, and we're also the same for the type of toys that we like. We love Monster in My Pockets and the gross out stuff like the Mad Balls and the Boglins and all that kind of thing. I'd sent him some stuff recently for his collection that he needed, and it was just good to get together and be able to talk about all of these kind of things and vibes in a shop that's just surrounded by all of this stuff. Some people will pay more if it's got his grub on yeah, his just chest. Noticed. None of them have their yeah. But I don't care. It's only a little grub. I mean, either. I don't care. But um, I do remember when I was a kid, though, the little heat. Yeah. They had visionaries. They got them in here. Have those. I saw a box thing up here somewhere, visionaries vehicle. Mm. Probably got some. Uh, oh, I loved those as a kid. And that's the Aurora model kit. No, I got the Rodan. That's the Godzilla, but that's made up. 
Is that the Rodan that's up there? Yeah, yeah. Rodman, Rodan. Now, one of the things that I really like about Ian and what he brings to the vintage Toy Monster is this is a guy that likes to travel far and wide and track down real obscure, weird pieces so that his shop has stuff that you don't see anywhere else. He's got a lot of good contacts overseas. He likes to travel abroad to America and that kind of thing. And he likes to bring a lot of stuff back to his shop that you wouldn't find anywhere else in the country. He's the guy that brought that giant monster head to the NEC a few months ago. You will have seen me freaking out over that when I saw it at that toy fair. And that's just a prime example of the kind of thing that Ian likes to go out of his way to bring to the vintage toy monster. Oh, that's strange that they've got yeah. they're nothing to do with a kaiju on no, the box. Just the box art. The box art's like. lovely, though. Japanese? Yeah, super nice, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is nice. Different, isn't it? Yeah, it is, a little tumbler. Yeah. Uh, you see, like, the He Man and the, the Turtles but ones and things. Like and pots, they? They have, so, what's no, it for? Will, you know, for mustard. European, it's not for a little beaker of cordial, no, it's for I mustard. I think they're like mustard ones, oh. the same as them. So, if you go out into like, France and Belgium, there's loads of these out there. I don't have got that particular one. No, and bringing them back in. here without getting cracked up in your suitcase because they're only delicate, aren't they? Yeah, no, they won't last. This is a mint piece, I just saw that whole thing in the yeah, set. You see, yeah, I see nice that around at Stafford a lot, but not in the box like that. Nice right, in the box. I love the skull. Yeah, yeah the skull's the no, dopest no, no, bit right, in that neon the yellow. Best bit, isn't it? You always see these, don't you, kicking around. Yeah, you do, yeah. Yeah, yeah free Mighty Max in there. Oh, yeah, that is dope. It's from the Italian market, I think. Yeah, I'm out of that. Whee! Yeah, not seen that in England. So where's the Mighty Max inside it? Is it actually in there? It, but is, is it one of those two? I'd imagine that's what it is. One of those two. Pity it's not like an exclusive colour or something Well, you like. never know, do you? You don't know. You don't know. Be good if it was. But... So what is this in there? You, do you like cut it open? There's a toy in there. Yeah, like a bag, of, a bag of goo. See, how could you own that and not open it up? You'd have to open yeah, it. Yeah, that like a bag of slime. You soak it in water like a trash bag bunch, cut him open. You got them, and it could have one of four monsters. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so like cool. this, I'd have to open that up. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. TH3, I see that, yeah, yeah. Sealed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sealed. Yeah, yeah, I did get one, yeah. No, I think it's a different one, that. Let's have a look. Oh, excuse me, Ed, pal. I'm here, let's have a look at it, Ian. Or is it never opened? Something else that Ian had there that was really cool, and I'd said that it caught my eye, but it didn't because he had it hid away and he brought it out to show me, was another figure from the TH3 project. So if you saw the Doncaster Toy Fair episode where I picked up the Black Genius 3 for this line, you'll know that it's a series that I've got a lot of love for. So when Ian told me that he'd got one in his shop, and it's one that I didn't already have in my collection, obviously I wanted to check it out and take a closer look at it. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, beautiful, aren't they? Oh, and it's never even been opened, no, this one. It's still, still. So, I mean, I can't be buying that just to pull it open and set it up for video. <laughs> <laughs> I think they matter they come with all these like little wires and things oh, no. like... Look at that on a kid's toy bill, like you have to put all like your own wires oh, yeah. into it and things. Stick that in your brother's eye then. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Test it on the put, a, put a battery in it, yeah. yeah plug it into the wall. And they're so yeah. brittle these, like that. Oh, you, you, you know about there. the gold yeah. plastic, this so this this yeah. type of gold just snaps Snack, after yeah. years. Yeah, we should put it together now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fix it together. Yeah, so a lot of that stuff, like them Star Wars Try weapons. And and now this thing was sealed, it had never even been opened. And when it comes to a toy like this, I like one that's already open. I want it to be complete, but I want it to be something that I don't have to open myself so that I don't feel bad. So I did decide to leave it, but as I got back, the more I thought about it, the more that I kind of wish that I'd have brought that home with me. How much are your mini boglins? Uh, they're about four pound each, right? Yeah. Any monsters in my pocket? Yeah, you got little monster in my pocket boxes, pocket. Um, little tubs well, you can have a, a rinse through, unopened. Italian ones. Oh. 
So I'd, God, I'd, I'd I'd have to he it. comes over, brings me some cool bits. Who does? An Italian guy. Yeah. The monsters wrestlers here. Yeah, they got the monsters wrestlers. I like those. Cool, that. Huh? Yeah, wicked colours as well. Wicked yeah, card yeah. art. <laughs> Real squirming bugs. Do you know anything about these? Yeah, yeah, they're cool. With the little bit squirm thing. I think that's even edible. Yeah, what's, that stuff. What's that thing in the middle there? It's like goo that will squirt out. But you can. I think you can even eat it. I think it's like edible gelatin slime. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be. I guess. Then that isn't it. See, I always wanted a foot soldier. I never, are these the rebranded ones? Though? No, it's just from the movie, the movie see, the movie stars series. You see that? Oh, so it's yeah, what they yeah. look like in the purple, aren't they? Yeah, purple in the in the nineties movie. Where he goes, damn it! You know, parents lost their shish. <laughs> <laughs> and I love all these, these like ceramic um, money jars and cookie jars and I've things. I've got this Donatello that's like this big. I don't know where I got him from, but it's like... An old school one. Yeah, like a vinyl thing. Yeah, they got them. They do all four and then they do uh, Bebop and Rocksteady as well. I, I want figures that size. And it looks like, like it could be a four quidder. Yeah, he looks like a four quidder. I've got to come out of here in one toy. There's, there's loads of minis there. Look, you see them, all these Thundercats at the back. I've got a few of these. I've got pen, pen throw, is They're cool because they come out with little weapons sometimes. My brother used to have these. You had the guy with the rock for a hand back there. He had them, yeah, because that, that's a bit more after your time, isn't it? Small yeah, soldiers. Yeah. Biker Mice here. Bucky over here. That's Bucky, yeah. Love Bucky away. Commander Dogstar. Toad Borg and Dead Eye Duck. Will of the Wit. Have you got one of those? Yeah. I ain't got Will of the Wit's little glasses that fit on his face. And Rock Lords, Brimstone, Magma. I love all them. Crackpot, that's my favourite of the band. Yeah, yeah, ages ago. When I used to swear too much. <laughs> yeah, I had to put it on mute. Couldn't listen to it. <laughs> Little kid coming up. So, if I have a full one. Yeah, yeah I've got that. Saying, what it was, at one point they were going for stupid money. Yeah, they were, they one were. Day, I think, didn't you do a thing on him? That probably didn't help price that, not go up at all, yeah. I think since he'd done a, he'd done a YouTube I did a video on him. On it, or whatever, <laughs> it, they went, Bosh. Same as Mighty Max. Yeah. It's alright, he gave me a few of his spares. I anyway. gave you some spares, so. I gave you a, a wolf's breath on that. He's an influencer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Until he clicked to the influencer. Can so, I get another battery out of my bag out yeah. in there? Yeah, yeah, of yeah. Course, mate. Do you know that line, food fires? It's like a sausage you, Yeah, there's like a burger, a sausage, barbecue bummer, fries, or like junk food, donuts and stuff. And they're all. Uh, Well, he appeared like three times in the show, but one time was Andre the Giant playing him. The Bionic Bigfoot, the Sasquatch Beast. That's a beast figure. Another piece that Ian had in the shop that I would have really liked to come home with was the Bionic Bigfoot from the $6 million man line. Now this is a figure that's on many people's holy grail lists, especially box like this, so it was a little bit out of my budget, but very nice to see. And as I explained to Bill in the clip, like this is one of only two figures that I need to complete that entire line. So at some point, I'm definitely gonna have to pull the trigger on one of those because yeah, man, I really need one. <laughs> There's only two I need and then I've got all them from that whole set, that he's one of them. Well, there you go, mate. Pick it up. Well, I, I would, but I just I know that it won't be within my budget. I remember like 20 years ago, someone offering my dad one for like 80 quid at the toy fair, and he was like, nah, I'm not bothered. 20 years ago? Yeah, yeah, so that tells you what it's going to cost now. Yeah. i got one of these, a couple of these pops stuff. you got a Hulk, can't you? Mm, i got the Hulk loose. i got um, Sergeant Slaughter box now. Oh, have you? Yeah. Yeah, he's a good one to have. These are a great playmates figure, I always like. Skeleton, are they the skeleton he should have warriors? Like, he's a rack, so he should have like loads of arms, but yeah, skeleton warriors. Oh, I want to watch the, the show. They're another one I collected them all to do a video they're on and just never cool. around to. Yeah, they're mint. They're well, I, know, I know you like your Harry Howes and Same stuff. people who did Toxic Crusaders and Ninja Turtles toys. Playmates. Are they one of your favourites? I love playmates, yeah. I like to make my figures looking like playmates made them. Something else that I would have really liked to buy is a couple of Ian's Shogun Warriors. So I really love this line. I've only got one of them, Ray Dean, but it's one of my favourite things in my collection and eventually I want to get a whole run of these figures. And ever since Ian first got these a few years ago when I saw them on his NEC stall, I always really wanted to add them to my collection. 
I love that as well. The, um, the big one at the back. Yeah. No, Ray Dean, I've got the Mazinga one. And the Guy King. There's like six in the set. Unfortunately though, these again were a little bit out of my budget. And the reason I keep talking about budget and having to be fugal with my cash and that kind of thing is that this is not the only place that we were going to be this weekend that sold toys. We were also going to be going to somewhere the next day that would be incredible for toy buying and I didn't want to blitz all my money in the first shop. So unfortunately, as much as I wish it were different, I wasn't able to add a couple more Shogun Warriors to my collection on this occasion. On this occasion. I like these as well when they, they, they did newer Predators in the old Kenner style, like in the 90s style, but that's from Robert Rodriguez's Predators. I like, I like their film. I quite like Predators. Predators. They were fun. Do. But, but your stuff is about building things out of trash out your bin. My stuff's about like spending all your money on toys. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's where it becomes bad. Oh, build buying stuff. Build buying build stuff. Buying stuff. Stuff. That's what we always call it, don't we? Stuff. Platoon. Platoon. Oh, man. Omen. Oh, what, what omen is it? First omen? First one. Oh, really? nice. This is the original. It's the six, 666 one. Yeah, yeah. Everyone binned them, didn't they? I've got a nice all coming soon of VHS. Yeah. The dude cleared so out a video shop. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Pass, cool. Bargain. Blockbuster. Bargain. Bargain. They give away Basket. prices. <laughs> they work, right? I don't know. I've tested <laughs> They got a bit of tracking Four when. Four quid. What would you want? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> video that works. <laughs> you always know some. Something's about to happen, either someone's about to strip off or someone's about to get killed when it starts getting flickering. Yeah, because yeah. it's just some reason. 20, people rewind it. So at this point, we'd been at the shop a couple of hours. Bentlegs had found a shiny notebook that he liked. Bill had bought some VHS tapes. I was at this point the only person that had not bought anything. So I put my camera down because it's always hard to look what you want to buy when you're filming everything. Getting my hunting hat on and really having a look at the shelves and what was on offer and deciding if there's anything that I wanted to bring home to add to my collection. Now there was lots of little bits and bats in this store that I could have come home with but the one thing that really stood out to me is something that I'd walked past several times and I'm so glad that I looked deeper into the back of the shelves because I saw something, well not one thing, two things that as soon as I saw them instantly I knew without question they were going to be coming home with me. So here we are at the Vintage Toy Monster and it's pretty stacked, pretty overwhelming. It's one of those shops where you've got to like see the surface level of toys and then have a little deeper dive for the stuff that's behind them. And in doing that, I saw something that I've been looking for for a long time. And I saw them in the back of this cabinet with all the Transformers and it's a couple of Tommy Z Knights and they've got a real nice price on them. Z Knights or Z Knights, depending on where you're from in the world. But I've put them to one side because I definitely reckon that they're going to come home with me. How much are you spending, Bill? I don't know yet. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got few, uh, I've got a few bogglings over there. Three poundies wrapped up so far. So what I found were a couple of Tommy Z Knights. Now these are a spin-off of the Tommy Zoids line and I really, really love these figures. It's only recently that I started thinking about them again and thinking that I want to add some to my collection, but I bought a bunch of them years ago. And when I was a kid, a friend at school showed me these in the Argos catalogue and I honestly thought that they were the coolest robots ever. Being a fan of Zero Divide and Z-Bots and Power Workbots and that kind of thing. And I saw that they were a mix between like Vikings and Samurais and Insects and Space Robots with swords and axes and shields and... Honestly, I'd never seen another robot design that spoke to me more than these did. I'll give you 300 for the pair. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do bidding in there, come on. This is a friendly, uh, a friendly shop. 
Sandwich. But you see, because they're like a kit that you buy and they're put really together. Cool. If you like your Nakamura as a kid, they just oh, explode. Right. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, yeah, it's a model kit that you buy. Zoids, isn't it? The same. I've never had them. Yeah, so, the I've never had. Yeah, Z Knights is the same company yeah, yeah. made Zoids, Tall Men. Uh, yeah, so that's why the things are like a yeah. nightmare, aren't they? And that's what they're like. So yeah. I, I bought some about 20 years ago. Did you? And, uh, and then just knocked them off my shelf I've and they all got missed. Box. Yeah. I've got a big box for them. All bits and bats. Oh, I'd, uh, love, I'd love a little dive in that box, me, Ian. Yeah. It was not here though. Oh, no, I know it, I know. I've never got round to sort them out. One for another day. So next time you come down, yeah, yeah. If, you know, if you ever come down again, yeah, we'll have a let rummage. me know and I'll bring me a few. Yeah, that, 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 yeah awesome that would be. I know there's a big T-Rex one in there. Oh yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that would be good for a look through. Now, like I said, without question, these were coming home with me. They're also not a line that's like super sought after, so I knew that the price weren't going to be that high. But when he told me the price of them, I was also really surprised. So, yeah, man, without question, like I said, they 100% got put on the desk. And that was what I was going to be coming home with from the vintage toy monster. So right about now, I thought we were getting ready to leave. I thought it was only me that was left to purchase something. Everybody was just waiting for me to make a decision on what I wanted to come home with. But then I turn around and I see that Bill Making Stuff's discovered the Mighty Max cabinet. Now, Mighty Max are a slippery slope. If you know me, you know that I love Mighty Max. And when it comes to these kinds of toys, these little play sets, when you're at a shop like Ian's and they've got such a vast selection of them, you can't really just buy one of them. And Bill in this moment was making my theory on that very clear because at first he was looking at one and then the next minute he had a handful of them and they were all coming home with him. What are you having, Bill? Oh, Mighty Max. I I've got these for my son. Yeah. They're for my kid, they're for my kid. Yeah, they're for my kid. Uh, <laughs> He likes axe murderers and chainsaws, isn't it? Kid after my own heart. He likes he likes to paint them up himself though when he gets a you know, bit of permanent yeah. marker. He'll look after it, boy. Also in Ian's shop, he's got this big glass desk that he still sits on top of, and inside are rows and rows of vintage stickers and trading cards. And I love to see these. I'm not buying any more because I've got stacks and stacks of this. I've got racks with them on in my house and that kind of thing. But if you've watched any of Bill's videos, you'll know that his work desk is covered in trading cards. He's got garbage pail cards and all that kind of thing. So it was only right that he picked up a couple of cards to add to his work desk. And on this particular occasion, he decided to go for the Toxic Crusaders cards, respectively. Oh, 20p. Perfect bargain. Look at oh, that. I can't go wrong. <laughs> yeah. The to get 20p out of it. How much did these pack in? I sell them at five a pack. You can have two for a fiver. Um, Can't go on with that. Um, one to open, one to hot, keep mint. Do you know why? Because I've got like my workshop, the desk is covered in garbage power stickers, yeah, Mario yeah, yeah, stickers, yeah, yeah. so I stick a couple of these on top of it. Uh, do you want to mix and match them? Oh, or? wait, yeah, yeah. What's the difference? Oh, so one, I think one's a trading card. What's in there? Picture card stick. No, these you got, get a these, hologram Yeah, one, mate. Too. So that's how we got on at the Vintage Toy Monster. We all made our purchases, had the mandatory picture outside with Ian, and all came away from the shop very, very happy with the stuff that we'd bought and the experience that we'd had while shopping there. As you know, if you watch this channel regularly, we go to lots of different vintage toy shops and each one has its own vibe, and the same can definitely be said for the Vintage Toy Monster. It's got a really good mix of stuff inside, lots of well-known mainstream lines, and then Ian's also gone out of his way to make sure there's some real obscure stuff in there as well. It's a really nice environment in the shop. Ian and his family are very friendly. He sorted us out wicked deals on all of the stuff that we bought, and it's safe to say that we will definitely be returning to this shop. So that's what we bought. That's what we came on with. But you know what I'm going to ask you next? What would you have bought if you would have come with me, bent legs, and Bill making stuff to the vintage toy monster? What did you see in the footage that we'd filmed that you would have not been able to leave without coming on with?
Now this toy hunt at the vintage toy monster was only the first of two things that we'd planned to do on the first day of this little road trip that we took. Straight from here, we drove for like another hour back to Bill's studio and started filming for a collaboration video that I'm not going to talk about too much now, but if you enjoy them episodes where I get a bit more creative and sculpt and design and build my own toys and paint them and that kind of thing, then this is one that you're really not going to want to miss. While we were there as well, we also had the opportunity to film all of Bill's studio and check out all the things that I've seen him making videos in person, which was completely surreal. And if you're a fan of his videos, you'll just know how crazy that was. And if you've never seen Bill's videos before, then please, I urge you to check them out and familiarise yourself with his work because the collaboration that him and me are going to be doing really is something special and it's something that I'm really looking forward to showing you. So with all that said, I really do hope you enjoyed this video today. Don't forget to check out the links below to check out Bill's work, check out the Retro Toy Monster, anyone else that I've mentioned, I'll link all them down below as well. And also, if you want to help support videos like this, I do have a Patreon. You can head over to patreon.com forward slash Slimehouse TV. All the money from that directly goes back into Slimehouse and helps us fund things like this, like cool road trips so that we can go and hook up with Bill making stuff or go to the Vintage Toy Monster or stuff like you're going to see in the next episode in this little road trip where we go back and visit the Ancient Mariner. Now, if you saw the first episode that we filmed with that guy, you'll know that this is a dude that deals in the most high-end Japanese holy grails ever. Literally the biggest Japanese toy dealer in the country. And we go to his second storage location and go for about 80 boxes of gold. So, yeah, man, if you like this episode and you like the episode that we did with the Ancient Mariner, then that's, again, one that you're really not going to want to miss. So until that next episode, I'm for your Kane. This is Slimehouse TV. Shouts to everyone that helped us out on this little road trip. The Patreon gang, Matt Robot Chubby, Ian at the Toy Monster, Bill Making Stuff, Bent Legs, all the gang. And I'll catch you in the next episode but until then i'm gone Bam.